Hi, I'm Steph Evans from EvoTech, partnered with MSC Software. Here's another one of our MSC Apex Quick Bytes, this time looking at super efficient hex meshing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look at some geometry and access, assess its ability to be hex meshed. So we have a, uh, a tool in Apex to show whether something is mappable. If it's non-mappable, it's shown in red. Uh, if it's mappable, it's shown in green. Uh, so this is a non-mappable surface at the mo uh, solid at the moment, so we can uh, tech mesh that very easily. But if we try and hex mesh it, then we see that uh, we, we've got a blocker there that it won't allow us to, um, to perform the operation. So we're going to partition the solid, so effectively break it up in, break a single solid up into a number of cells, still maintaining the original solid definition, um, but just gives us a bit more user control in terms of the, the geometry and the, the underlying hex mesh that we're going to develop. So this is a symmetric model. So first of all, we're going to split the solid about uh, two symmetry planes. So just by picking uh, a curve and then taking the, the halfway point on that curve and breaking about that plane and repeating that in the, in the second direction as well. Um, so picking the solid, picking the center of the, the curve, and then that gives us the cutting plane. Okay. So we've got three uh, unique solids here. So we're going to get rid of the two additional ones we don't need. Uh, so you're just going to work at this level on the, um, uh, the quarter model, as it were, uh, just showing it's still non-mappable, uh, just by looking at the, uh, the map icon, uh, showing that the body is in red. So we're now going to uh, uh, manipulate the geometry. So we're going to split the lower surface uh, based on this line. And I'm going to create what we call a filler surface, so a cylindrical surface from curve to curve. And that's going to act as a, as a, a cutting surface for some geometry editing we'll, we'll move on to in a second. And now we're going to mid-surface, or rather create a surface at an offset from the orange faces highlighted. And that will give us the... Um, the overall surfaces that we can see now. So the, the, the solid body is shown as transparent. Um, and we can change that in the tree as well. So full, full geometry display controls in there, or model display controls. So we're just going to extend the, the green surface just so it ensures it goes outside of the overall solid body for, for resultant cutting operation. And then using the split tool uh, to partition based on those underlying surfaces. Okay, so pick the solid pick the cutting surfaces, and that breaks the solid into uh, discrete cells or discrete partitions, still maintaining a, a single solid definition, but we've got those partitions defined within the solid. And that, that's critical in terms of ensuring that we've got mesh congruency between discrete cell subregions. Uh, so the, the body is now mappable, so hex meshable. So we can show that straight away, just picking a relatively coarse element edge length um, and develop the hex mesh based on those, uh, those dimensions. Okay, So a matter of seconds to get to hex, hex mesh geometry for this, this quarter model. Uh, but we, we probably want a bit more user control, certainly based on some of the examples we've seen on, on various LinkedIn posts. So we're going to refine the hex mesh now, uh, looking at some surface seeding, or some surface mesh seeding, I should say. So first of all, we're going to break the, again, the quarter model into an eighth model to split into two cells um, about this splitting plane. So we're just picking uh, three points. I just need to repeat that. I missed a couple of points there. So pick these discrete points. And we can see the cutting plane developed on the model. Middle mouse button to accept. And the solid is now split into those partitioned regions. And now we can start to use a uh, surface mesh seed. So a 10 mil element edge length just to create a mapped um, surface geometry. Really good quality at that region or those surfaces, I should say, and then creating a seed mesh on the, um, the symmetry plane, as it were, the symmetry surface, just changing some of the mesh parameters. So we've got a pretty good mesh definition here. And given the, uh, the generative nature of Apex, we can now start to split these surfaces up uh, to improve mesh quality. The mesh updates automatically as the, the geometry is edited. So very, very quick approach to, to making these changes. So we're just going to work our way around uh, we, we could have the element quality display shown on here at the same time, uh, but just for speed, we're just going to eyeball the, the model. Uh, it's pretty straightforward at this level. So just cutting out some of these fillets just to make sure that we've got um, mapped and good quality mesh definition across those, those zones, and then just uh, changing one of the regions to, to mapped, uh, sorry, to, to paved mesh from, from the map mesher. 
and that, that gives us um, the, the uh, C definition that we need. Okay, so we can, make, we can split the geometry and the mesh updates real time so we're not having to locally remesh. And again, that's, that's pretty core to a lot of the Apex functionality. Okay, so making some more changes again. So we, we, we can play games with the, with the model here to get the, the definition that we need. The, the key thing is we're not spending um, lots of time breaking the original solid into uh, discrete uh, split solids or uh, regions which are not connected. Um, and then having to use mesh seeding to ensure things tied together. So pretty straightforward approach. And now we can, we can start to look at the um, hex meshing of the, the full body uh, based on the six mil element edge length. So you can see it's a, a much finer mesh definition, certainly for the, the full body and, and for the fillets as well. Um, this may or may not be uh, the required density, but just to show some of the techniques we can use. And we, we can use transitioning as well, of course, in, in, in this example. And once we've developed that mesh, we can look at the mesh quality. So again, really, really straightforward to develop this. Uh, we, we get a near real-time update in terms of uh, the, the quality that's been defined. So just, just hiding the, the, um, uh, the surface elements or the shell elements, and then we can see the, the, the uh, hex element quality. So we, we've got uh, fully hex definition, no, no wedge elements in this model. Uh, so we've got a couple of very, very small percentage areas with um, some uh, uh, aspect ratio uh, issues we, we, we could spend further time uh, improving the, the mesh definition if necessary and then we can move on to the the full solid development so once we've got the the quarter model uh, set up as we want we can then uh, mirror the, that quarter solid in, into uh, across the two symmetry planes just to go back to the original definition of course we, we could have made all these changes uh, in one hit on the original solid uh, but it's just a bit more intuitive to, to be able to show the the, the cuts and uh, that type of thing as we're working through the model. Uh, so we can now Boolean those um, discrete solids together, still maintaining the underlying partitions. So we've now got one, one master solid, but with multiple cells defined. And you can see the, the white dotted lines represent those cells as well. We're still fully mappable, shown as green uh, in the display. And now we can hex mesh. Uh, well, we're going to surface seed, actually, uh, just, just briefly just to give us some of the, the local control that we want on those, um, those four-sided faces. So we've got the, the nice uh, map mesh definition there. And then we're going to go straight through and um, develop the, um, the full hex mesh. Uh, we're just going to get rid of some of the, um, uh, the additional curves that we don't need and may hold this up in terms of the mesh quality. So just uh, removing edges that we, that we don't need. And then we can go back into the hex meshing um, pick the solid again with the six mil element edge length, and then the, the solid mesher runs through, and we've developed um, the, the full hex meshes as we desired. So, really quick approach to uh, modifying the geometry, controlling the mesh, and then developing the, the overall mesh definition, of course. This may or may not be to everybody's taste, but it just shows some of the, the, um, the mesh development techniques that we've got. We can then show the free edges, so if we hide the surface mesh. Uh, we can see that the, the full body is, is defined. Uh, we've got no cracks in the model. And then we can move on to the, the, the full solid element to check. Uh, so everything here is uh, dominated by good quality elements. Uh, we've got a very, very small percentage of poor and bad elements, but uh, we're good to go. I hope you found this interesting. If you'd like to develop your Apex usage, head over to our site where you'll find many online learning opportunities.